what are you doing? Come on, amen. Let's get up on our feet, guys. Come on this morning. Good looking crowd. Good looking crowd. We need to weigh some of it on this side, though. We need someone to weigh yeah, him. Yeah, amen. Funnel them that away. Praise the Lord. God bless y'all. How y'all doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Look at this crowd today. Amen. Good. Good. I've got several preachers in the house. So I'm visiting. Somebody said, where's some, I, I met y'all. Where are y'all at? Look, some, back over here. Where are you from, preacher? Washington, as in the, the state? The state. Not D.C., right? All right, you can stay. No, I'm sorry. I'm horrible. I'm ho you're, you're just kidding what it's going to be like here today, okay? Bye -bye. God bless you, preacher. Got another one visiting right here. Where are you from, buddy? Rochester, New York. We're glad to have you, man. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. What's the name of your church up there? Lakeshore Community Church. I'm thrilled. I've seen a little bit of your ministry online through your friends there. Amen. But we're glad to have you, preachers. And we got more preachers. We got some retired ones over here. Another preacher. Good to see you. I met you before, man. I'm glad to have you. And that's what, Pittsburgh area? Pittsburgh, right over here, baby. Another pastor. Hey, turn around, turn around. There's another pastor from Pittsburgh right behind. You got two of them. They don't even know each other. How about y'all? You gonna know each other now, aren't you? I can see them having dinner. There you go, come on. Welcome today, welcome today. We have a, a special treat for you. We're gonna go a little Southern Gospel on you with a, with a group today, their Voice of Hope. And Cindy is right out of our church, but the other two, they're from Ohio, and they travel around up there. But they're with us. Go ahead and welcome them this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. So you're going to feel like you're in the country a little bit, but before we do any of that, we want us to have some worship songs with our band this morning. Amen. Two great songs. Turn them up. Let's get it going. Amen. Let's put our hands together. Thank God we live in America.
They tried to get me a new mic or fix my mic because I spit all over the other one. They changed the top of it, and now it's real tinny sounding, so I got to use other people's mics now. You know what the lesson is? Leave my dirty mic alone. I like it. Amen. Now, they're just trying to be nice to me. Amen. Welcome today. God bless you. I heard this song about four years ago, three or four years ago. I was out in Colorado. I tried to go out there in the summer, have for many, many years, for a week or two, and uh, just enjoy the beauty. Sometimes I'll preach a message, take uh, Roger with me, and we'll beam it on the big screen back here. Nothing like a message on creation out in Colorado. Amen. But I heard a group sing this at a little chapel I go to. And I fell in love with it. It's called Oceans. And I thought, you know what? What's these Colorado people singing a Florida song for? So we sort of made it our own around here. We love this song, Oceans. Amen. When you're facing mess, when you feel like you're going under, listen, God's good to me. Say that with me. God's good to me. Say it again. God's good to me. God, you're good to me. You're faithful and true. Oh, God. Sing this song. Let it get inside of you today. Where feet may fail. Amen. We have him. Hallelujah. Stronger in the breath. 
I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves My soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are What a great job, guys. We only got two. I got it. We only got two out of you, but boy, they were good ones. Amen. Come on. God bless you today. Welcome. Glad you're here today. Had surgery about six weeks ago. Got a good bill of health from the doctor on Friday. He said, I still got to take it easy. But anyway, I, he said, you're doing good, man. Amen. I know you prayed for me. Keep praying for me, especially today, to title my message. It's not going to be long because we have communion right after this out in front of the crosses. That's the way we start our month here at Fellowship Church. We always start it with communion. Amen. It's the first Sunday of our month. And we're going to do that in a little bit after we get done. It'll be awesome on the way out. But the title of my message today is Fighting the Stress of Satan. Say that with me. Fighting the Stress of Satan. What happens? When he gets in your mind, in your life, in your mess, in your family, in your stuff, what are you going to do? Lay down? Say. Are you going to try to fight in your own strength? Oh, I'm good. Well, we saw how that worked out for Peter. He got his tail whooped, didn't he? Say. And we're not as strong as Peter in this room. I'm telling you that right now. We need help. And today we're going we're gonna to fire some bullets today, baby. Amen. It's not long, but it's going to be strong. Amen. So that's coming up in just a bit after voice of hope thank you for being here let's pray together lord we thank you for loving us thank you for loving us while we were sinners lord all of us need you all of us are lost without you all of us are screwed up we need you there's no way we can go from here to where you are without jesus help us lord and lord you've called us to a life down here a life that's full, a life that is powerful and confident and free. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be that light that you've called us to be down here. We cannot do it on our own. We need you desperately. Lord, we don't want to have church today without you. We don't want to go through motions and just be here and clicking off stuff. We want you here. We want your presence here. Lord, we know when we're humble, when we're humble, you will come to us. You will help us. You will lift us. Lord, we know when we're full of ourselves and arrogant and we can do it and we can make it on our own. Lord, that's an affront to you. So, Lord, help us right now, all of us, to humble ourselves. We're in church on a Sunday morning in America. Oh, God, thank you for loving us, blessing us like you have. And, Lord, may this hour be a powerful hour we spend together from here on we pray in jesus name amen hallelujah guys be seated if you would thank you so much miss rachel is coming with some announcements you want this come on right here have it make it quick i'll be quick good morning again okay Welcome again to Fellowship Church. We're so excited that you're here with us today. If it is your first time, um, we are so glad that you chose to worship with us today, and we want to give you a gift just for coming today. So please let us know that it is your first time visiting us so that we can give you that gift. We also ask that you fill out that guest registry in your worship guide. Let us know how you found us here at Fellowship Church or any other information that you want to put on there. Drop it in the offering bag, and we will be in touch with you. And we're so glad that you're here with us today. First Sunday communion is right after this service, so when pastor is done, and he'll be done in a timely manner, I'm sure, we will, we will meet out at the crosses in the courtyard for a beautiful time of communion. I didn't do it. Tonight, um, starting at 4 o'clock, we have our high school ministry, our youth group meeting at 4. Doors open about 345, so come on, um, and we'll just have a time in the Word and just time to catch up on our week. And then um, at 5 o'clock, our Blasters, which is our middle school group, they'll come and join us, and we'll have some time in the Word together, and then we'll have dinner and games, and it's going to be a great night. If you have never been 
and you are in middle school or high school and you are looking for something to do on a Sunday afternoon, join us at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock, depending on your grade. And we'd love, love, love to have you and get to know you more. So invite a friend if you haven't ever done that. Wednesdays at 8.30 a.m., we like to clean our home, and we need volunteers to help do that. So if you are someone who loves to clean, it's not me, but if you're someone who loves to clean, uh, <laughs> uh, meet us here Wednesday at 8.30 in the morning, and uh, you will be given a job to help clean up this, this place. Yes, it does go quick. And then next Saturday night, we spring forward. Yes, so don't forget to change your clocks. <laughs> so don't forget so that you can uh, show up on time to things <laughs> or not be early I don't know late, late. I, I can never remember all I know is spring forward and fall back and that's all I need to know as long as I'm not late I'm okay March 17th mark your calendars 8 30 and 10 30 we have Chris Golden coming to sing for us at both services uh, if you never heard him um, his sound is wonderful and we're so blessed that he gets to come and um, and sing for us so invite someone on March 17th to join us to listen to Chris Golden at both services and on April 21st we have our big day um, as our Easter Sunday and we start first thing in the morning and but we end in the evening with a beautiful sunset and baptism so if you are wanting to be baptized um, this year this Easter um, what better day to do it than on Easter Sunday so in the beautiful Gulf of Mexico um, you'll get dunked right in those waters and it's absolutely wonderful so sign up today if you're looking to be baptized on Easter Sunday I think that's it have a wonderful week Come on. Amen. Woo, praise the Lord. Got Voice of Hope with us this morning. We're having all kinds of mic problems. We're just going to try to figure them out, okay, guys? So hang in here. And uh, that's what happens sometimes. Amen. Especially when we have guests in the house. We start pushing buttons and doing things. Amen. Cindy's been with us at Fellowship Church for 14 years. Can you thank the Lord for Cindy Rapp right there? Come on. She has quite a testimony of how pain and struggle in your life and just being beat up by the devil sometimes and That's just right. some bad mess in life. But uh, God's been a friend to Cindy and has helped her in her life. And Cindy's a helper to others. She, uh, I'm proud of her. Cindy sings out in our community a lot. Cindy will stand up and flat out give a message for the Lord. Doesn't matter where she's at. She will preach the word. She will break the word. She will do it. She's not ashamed at all, and uh, I am so proud of her. And this is another ministry that she has, and that's Voice of Hope. She sings with these guys when they're back up north a lot, amen? Yeah. And y'all travel around. They've got some recordings. I ask you to go buy their recordings today. But for about 20 minutes now this morning, we're going to have just some southern gospel, amen? Welcome Voice of Hope to the house this morning, right. amen? Come on. Praise the Lord. Go get them. Okay. Go get them, Kevin. Lean on the Father and what He has told When the Lord says, come unto me Listen close because He gives victory There's a voice of hope that anchors my soul It helps me through trials and it makes me whole So I'll cling to the promises He's given me I pray he set me free When doubt and fear try to take their hold Stand on the promises you've been told The doubt will fade and the fear will run When you get in line with the Father and Son There's a voice of hope that anchors my soul it helps me through trials and it makes me whole So I'll cling to the promises He's given me I praise His name for He set me free So who are you going to hear from today? All those around you saying no way Shift 
lift your focus and attention above His voice is filled with nothing but love There's a voice of hope that anchors my soul It helps me through trials and it makes me whole So I cling to the promises He's given me I praise His name for He set me free This is what this song is meant to reach and touch people with. But, you know, sometimes I get a different, you know, message from those songs. And this one is very special because it's called Waging a War. I'm, I'm one of those stubborn people that like to get out there and do it myself. You know, I want to take control of it. I want to do it. Uh, but, um, you know, it's not always how God wants to do it. And if we keep fighting Him and quit trying to do it our way, it's... You know, not gonna. We're waging a war that's not ours, and we're just, you know, putting too much pressure on ourselves. If we just believe His word, you know, the, the war is already won. The battle is won. It's fought. You know, so all we have to do is just, you know, get behind Him and let Him lead us and let Him fight that battle for us. Amen. It's called waging a war. <laughs> Wait, 
Praise the Lord. This next song is called Through the Fire. It kind of has the same kind of message. Man, when we go through the troubles and trials of the life that we live every day, we walk through the fire. But who's there with us? God is walking through that fire with us, and he's going to pull us right out. So Nathan's going to sing Through the Fire. Amen. Well, we all are, but... Times I question certain circumstances of things that I could not understand, and many times in trials, weakness blurs my vision, and my frustration gets so out of hand. It's then I am reminded I've never been forsaken. I've never had to stand one test alone And as I look at all the victories His Spirit rises up in me And it's through the fire My weakness is made strong Whoa. He never promised That the cross would not get heavy And the hill would not be for me to be myself. Not everybody can do that, Pastor. And I know several of you in the house today, but I'm me here. If you see me at McDonald's, I'm still me. Amen? I'm just going to be me. It's really hard to get to that place in your life. And sometimes it takes fire. It takes the battles. It takes when you think you're alone and you ain't. When you think you're done and you ain't. Think you're out and you ain't. Amen? And uh, boy, that's, I just love being here today with you. You're a blessing to me. Amen. Thank you for giving to the Lord's work here. 
Uh, we're a debt-free ministry. We started in the high school 16 uh, and a half years ago. Amen. Didn't have a clue what we were doing. And, uh, but God helped us. Amen. Yes. Twelve and a half years at that high school. I met somebody today. Last time they saw me was at that high school. <laughs> and they didn't know where we were. So they're looking around town. And they found us. And she said, well, this must be the place. Amen. This must be the place. They must have built it. We did it for the glory of God, and he gets all the credit. Let's give him yeah. praise this morning. Come on. All the credit. All the credit. Flat out. Amen. And we take an offering a little different around here. We do it this way. If you can give cheerfully, we'll receive your gift. If for any reason you can't give it cheerfully, we ask you to hang on to it. If you've got a light bill to pay and you're struggling, pay your light bill. Don't pray to Jesus about paying a light bill when you've got the money to pay your light bill. Now, I might sound like a kook. I, I think I'm the normal one here. Amen. The money you got right now, he gave you to do. Amen. We're here to receive, you know, as the Lord has blessed you and you want to give to him, and this ministry will receive it that way. Amen. And this church has never gone lacking. We've never uh, had to beg. Yes or no? And I'd say we're doing fine. How about you? Amen. Let's check a little how we're doing. Last month, we operated our budget on three weeks. That means we gave the last one away to seats in that upper deck that's going to be going in May, June this year. That's our plan. So we need 100 grand for these seats. Amen? Last week we're sitting at 40. We said, let's, let's have fun. Let's see what we can do last week. Here's what we did. Pop it up. 25,500 on top of that. Amen? Come on. Pretty good. Pretty good for cheerful giving. <laughs> Amen? So we need 34 5. Now today's offer doesn't go to that. It takes care of our ministry and what we're doing here. If you want to give just to that, you just write seats or building or whatever, and it'll get there. But today we ask you to give as the Lord would lead you to do. Amen. We thank you for what you do. We appreciate you. Amen. You hear me now? Yes or no? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Richard's my friend. He's been in the church about a year. For some reason, this guy took a shine to me. I have no idea because you're a little goofy, probably, right? Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that's Amen. It. But he comes out, especially uh, when I've been needing help and uh, I ain't been feeling so good. He says, can I help you, preacher? Can I help you with the yard? And it's not just him. I work with him. Yes. But at least he tells me, slow down. That's right. Let's sit down and drink some water. That's right. Amen. That's right. But I love you, buddy. You've been in our too. church about a year. And that's the thing about this church. There's no pecking order. Say that with me. There's no, no pecking order. There's no pecking order here. That means, oh, I'm new. Can I serve? Well, Sure you can. Sure you can. You matter just as much as I matter. Yes or no? That's right. So we want you here to serve the Lord with us. And you're just living proof of that, aren't That's you? Right. You can come right here, right. serve the Lord. Very Amen. We don't have, we don't, we don't pick and choose. Oh, I like you. Like, no, no. We just, we all screwed up. I like all of you. Amen. Say. It. Amen. Let's serve the Lord together. Amen. Richard, pray for us. Come on. Father, we just come before you, Lord. We're so humbled, Lord, that, Flat out. that we can be with you, Lord, Amen. in your presence, Lord. Amen. And You're good to us. We love you, Father God. And mm. We just we need you so much, Lord. Yes, Even when we don't realize we need you, mm. we, we still need you. Yes, Lord. So, Lord, I, I just pray, Lord, that you'll just bless this offering, mm. Lord. Amen. And you will, Lord, because the work of God needs to be done. Lord. Amen. And you'll put this on the hearts of the people, Amen. Lord. Yes, and every Lord. need will be met, Lord. Mm. I pray, Lord, you continue to strengthen my pastor, mm. Lord, and Help me, Lord. lift him up, Lord, and just encourage him. Yes, Lord. I pray that you'll just bless the body of Christ Amen. here, Lord, with your anointing, Lord, the and, and the word of God, Lord, as it is spoken, Lord, mm. and through, through our pastor. Mm. And, Lord, we just give you all the praise all and honor, Lord, in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you, buddy boy. Amen. Thank you much, man. Another song or two by Voice of Hope. Come on. Jesus lived his life to die. Then he died to save rose again in victory and proved his sovereignty. Now we can see his heart in the many things he left us as the story unfolds for all to see. The silver went to Judas, his body went to Joseph, his mother to the apostles who would take good care 
take a couple of minutes just to share a testimony and about this song. You know, um, I've been fighting, you know, the health issues and I have diabetes and of course, you know, it will attack your feet if you don't take good care of them. Well, I went on a cruise with my daughter and I got a blister on this foot over here and that was probably eight or nine years ago. Well, and I, it turned into an ulcer and um, I've had several surgeries on the foot um, they've tried to restore it, they tried to reshape it, they tried to do everything with it, but it wasn't working, you know, it just wasn't working. But I wasn't giving up. I was like, you know, this, you're going to fix this. It can be fixed. I'm telling you, it can be fixed. And um, the doctor finally talked to me one day, and he said, you know, he said, we can keep fighting this. He said, and I know you're a woman of faith. He said, and I know that, you know, you pray that God will move in this special way. And, and heal your foot. He said, but you know, there might be something else he's got prepared for you to do out there. Nathan wrote this one song. It's called uh, Changing My Story. And, um, you know, the song has, had a different meaning for him, but I took a different meaning from it because I felt like I was giving up. Because I'm a fighter, as like Pastor said this morning. I'm a fighter. I won't give up. I'm stubborn as I can be. You know, but I just kept on fighting and fighting and fighting. And the doctor finally said to me, and my husband was there, and, you know, he said, will you listen to the doctor, please? And I said, yeah, okay, I will. And uh, the doctor said, we can keep fighting. 
he said, and we can keep operating and doing everything that, you know, we've been doing. He said, but it's not working. He said, I think you need to think about what is your purpose for fighting this? And you know, when I, he talked to me and I said, you know, I said, maybe he's right. You know, maybe, maybe God does have a different plan for me. And so it helped me to, you know, stop saying, you know, I'm giving up. I'm just giving up. I'm laying down. I'm just letting everything, you know, take over my life. But then I thought about Nathan's song that he wrote. And um, it's not the song I'm going to sing, but, but that song gave me a message. He said, you're not giving up. God's just changing your story. He's giving a different path for you to go. And you know, through all of that, uh, that gave me some, you know, it, it, it gave me a reason to think, well, maybe I can get through this okay. But you know, God is faithful in everything that he does, everything that he does. And we might not understand his ways, we might not understand his timing, but you know, I just prayed and I said, you know, God, I said, if, if this is where I'm supposed to be, and if you are changing my story and giving me a different direction, then give me peace, because I can't do this without your peace. And I'm telling you, when I prayed that, and I, I you know, I, when I prayed that prayer, I just felt a warmth that came around me. It was just like, it was like, Jesus was giving me a hug, you know, and he gave me peace. And you know, there may be somebody here this morning that needs to know that no matter what you're going through, God is faithful and he always will be. So worship with me as I sing God is faithful. backs against the wall There's a God above who's looking down in love He's always been faithful and true He is a friend who sticks closer than a brother and he knows your pain no other so don't be afraid step out in faith and call on his name God still faithful in the midst of it all he's faithful When the earth beneath your feet gives way in defeat, he's faithful. <laughs> when it's just too much for you and you don't know what to do, God.
go where the milk and honey flow And I'm not gonna change my mind Happy on my journey and I'm still feeling mighty fine Still feeling fine Thank you so much Did you enjoy the voice of hope? Let them know it! They sang their heart out! Come on, man! Amen! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord. Amen. Be seated if you would. You're going to have to put up with me now for a few minutes. Amen. Now this sweet lady right here, sweet lady right here, she didn't tell you, but she ended up losing a good part of that leg, didn't you? She has a prosthesis on that leg, and she's still smiling. She's still singing. She's still got purpose, doesn't she? Amen. We're proud of you. We're proud of you. You touch our life. Amen. Come on. Here we go. Cindy, how you doing? You about wore me out. Man, I'm down there singing with you. Man, I got to preach. Now, leave me my stool because I'll probably sit on it because I'm wore out. Amen. Thank you. I appreciate it right there. Amen. Let's go to the Word this morning. In case you thought, well, we're just going to have some singing. No. We're going to have some time in the Word. Now, some people, music puts you to sleep, okay? You need to slap yourself or something, okay? Say I don't like speaking to sleepy people. I don't mind speaking to my wife. We're laying in bed. She's sleepy. Okay, good night. But that ain't you, okay? So here we go. Let's go to the Word this morning. A strong message today. You okay? Over here? Come on. A strong message today. I'm in a series I wrote called Secret Stress. It's the stress that comes from keeping secrets. In my opinion, strong opinion, the things we keep the most secret are family secrets. Husband, wife, wife, husband, our children, our parents, things that they did to us. Maybe relationships we were in where people hurt us and did things to us that we don't even want to speak about. We buried it so deep. But if we're not careful, that stuff can absolutely destroy you. Secret stress. Did you know you can cast all your care upon the Lord for He cares for you? Did you know that, yes or no? Did you know that? You cast all that care and that stress on Him because He cares for me. That's a big deal. Now sometimes the stuff hits the fan. It all gets out and people can't, you know, they see it. and I mean, that'll, that'll hurt you, man. I'd rather live life where people know just who I am. Here's the way I look at it. People don't like me, or people like me because I'm being somebody who I ain't. One day I'll be who I am, and they won't like me. So I've just decided I'm going to be who I am. And if they don't like me, that's their problem, not my problem. Now, not if I'm a pain in the rear, being evil, ugly, but no, but to change me, I am who I am. I came from where I came from. I talk the way I talk. I dress like I dress. You don't dress very nice like a preacher. Well, tough. I like this is me dressed up, okay? Oh, that's fun. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> golly, y'all are terrible. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just me. There's an incredible freedom when you can just be you. And let some of that stress go. But don't think that's the way I've always been. I was the guy that kept stuff in. I'm the preacher. The pastor's family. And had a lot of trouble at home. And started early in my marriage. And I was hurt. And I didn't feel loved. And so I just, I'll try harder. I'll get better. I, I can be better. And I was hurt again. Then one day it just all came out. And I was alone. Boy, that's rough. You hear me, yes or no? You get so bad sometimes you even consider about taking your own life. That's terrible, isn't it? Stress can hurt you. Yes or no? Amen or oh me? So I started thinking about it when I was having surgery, and I was at home a lot, and 
So I just started thinking about secrets and stress and looking back at my life. But then I started looking back at the life of pastors that I knew in large churches, and I started researching. And boy, it's pretty pathetic what people keep secret in church. Did you hear me or not? You see the Catholic Church dealing with it. They're trying to now, yes or no. We'll call us a conference and we'll deal with child molesters. I'm sorry, I don't believe a conference is going to fix that. Did, did you hear me or not? I have zero mercy for a child molester. Now, you might not like me for saying that, but at least you know who I am now, don't you? Yes or no? Say. Amen? Tough. Zippo. 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 You heard kids at this church? I'll be the la- I'll be, you, I will be the last person you will want to ever see. You hurt children in this church. You hurt children in this church, somebody beats the crap out of you, I'm happy for it. That's horrible, I know. Jesus said it this way. You hurt a child, it's better that a 2,000 pound stone be tied around your neck and you buried in the sea. See, I was pretty easy compared to him. Did you hear me or not? That's scripture, guys. The point is, is that the church has kept secrets for years. I don't want us to have secrets here. Did you hear me? I just let it all hang out when I preach. I got in trouble last week, didn't I, Dina? Where you at, Dina? Good, I'm glad she's out there. I last week talked about my wife wearing a bikini. And Dina got on to me. You shouldn't say that. So you know what I'm doing this week? I'm saying it again. I'm horrible. I'm terrible, aren't I? Anyway, let's get with the message. Here we go. Come on. Talking about stress, talking about stress, believe it or not, when I can just say something like that and get us to laugh a little bit, it's true. It just makes me feel more at home. Did y'all hear me or not? Come on, let's go. A lot of stress in this room. Here's what Jesus told his disciples. I've got about 20 minutes. He said, pray that you don't enter into temptation. He had the last supper with him. We're about to have the Lord's Supper in just a moment. Pray that you enter not into temptation. They went to the garden, and all of them, instead of praying, they did what? They what? They slept. Basically, Peter, the leader, I don't need it. I don't need it. I'm good. I don't need it. I'm good. Yes or no? He's good. I'm strong. I got it. We did two messages on Peter. Satan kicked Peter's tail, didn't he? Yes or no? So that's what I want for us, guys. Pray that you enter not into temptation. There's temptation out there. There's struggle. Satan wants to eat our lunch. The Bible says your adversary, the devil, Satan goes about as a what? Roaring what? Lion seeking whom he may what? Devour. The Bible says Satan, the thief, comes to what? Steal, kill, and what? That's who he is. He hates you. He hates me. Now, if we're all sailing to hell, he's happy. But the child of God, he wants to wreak havoc on your life and on my life. Because if we live for Christ, if we're overcomers, if we can have a testimony when a a leg is having to be removed and we can still say, he is faithful. He doesn't like that. But that's who we are. We're children of the living God. Amen? Amen. But he's going to fight us like a dog. So let's look at it today. So what happens when I have temptation? What happens when I'm facing Satan in my life? So what do I need to do? And that's the title of the message today. Fighting. Fighting. Say it with me. Say it with me. Fighting the what? Of who? I even thought about when I wrote that. Wow, that's quite a title. Fighting the stress of who? We think like, well, I can't say his name or something because he might get me. That's how goofy we are. No, I hate Satan. I've seen the havoc he's reaped on, reaped on my family. My own stepfather shot my mother six times and killed my mother because my mother was a beautiful testimony for Jesus Christ. And he's been on my heels and coming after me for years. Amen? But I'm going to tell you something right now. When you humble yourself and you give credit to the Lord, I ain't saying you're going to be Satan-free by any means, 
But you're going to look back and go, wow, has God ever been good to me? Amen. God is faithful. But we got to fight, guys. So how do you do it? I want to talk to you about it real quick. Fighting the stress of Satan. Roger's wondering if I'll ever get there. So how did Jesus fight the stress of Satan? I don't want to know how Fred did it. I don't know how Jesus did it. How did Jesus fight the stress of Satan? And you that know your Bible, you're going to say, well, that's pretty simple. I think I got the answer maybe already. But a lot of us, we don't know the answer and we're not doing what the Bible says. So I want to talk about it real quick. I'll just read the temptation of Jesus right here. Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness. Now, this is the Judean wilderness. This is also over by Jordan. I've been to Jordan many times. I've been to Israel many, many times. That make me an expert. But I've taken trips all into the wilderness because I'm just a nut, okay? One time I paid a little joker $10, an Arab kid, $10 to ride his little donkey. I was 275. I'm 235 right now. I sat on that little scrawny donkey, and my feet were literally on the ground. $10. And the kid looked at me, and he said, you fat. Want to punch this little Arab kid in the face. He said, you pay more money. True story. I got on that little scrawny donkey. Because this wilderness is rough. I mean, that hurt my rear end, but not as much as walking would have hurt my rear end. But uh, it is, it's not like grassy green wilderness. This is, the best way I can say it, the Judean wilderness and the wilderness there at, at uh, Jordan looks like shards of glass. Say that with me. Shards of glass. Now we go to, how many have been to Petra? You've been to Petra. Okay. Now behind Petra, though, Petra's sort of cool. But if you keep going behind Petra, for miles and miles and miles, it gets real. It ain't Petra no more. It is really unbelievable. And so this is Jesus. He's being led into the wilderness, and he's going to be tempted by Satan. If that ain't bad enough, he's just fasted how many days? Forty days and forty nights. So he's hungry. He's not just hungry. If I'm fasting forty days and forty nights, I'm irritable, frustrated. I am not in any mood to have this. But that's what happened. And he gives us something here. This is the Word of God. So, the tempter or Satan came to Jesus. Say it with me. If you be the Son of God, command these what? Stones be made what? Bread. So how did Jesus fight Satan? I'm not going to say much except read. He answered, but he answered. Jesus answered and said, say it with me. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, help me, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's clue one. So another temptation, the devil takes him up into the holy city. Jerusalem sets him on a pinnacle of the temple. Says unto him, if thou be the Son of God, cast yourself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning you. Satan talking to Jesus, quoting scripture to him. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest at any time you dash your foot against a stone. Say verse 7 with me. Come on. Jesus said unto him, it is written again. Say it with me. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. That's clue number two. How to fight Satan. Again. <laughs> you think you get rid of the devil, he's going to go his way. It ain't happening. He's going to keep dogging you. Again, the devil takes him up into an exceeding high mountain. He shows him all, all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said unto him, Satan to Jesus, all these things will I give you if you will fall down and worship me. Satan telling this to Jesus. Y'all, you, you listening? What did Jesus say? Then Jesus said unto him, say it with me, get thee hence or get behind me what? Satan. Now hang on, keep saying it. Come on. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Now we're going to talk about it in a minute, but verse 11 is what I want to be in my life. Then the devil leaves him. Oh, how many know you've been stressed out by the devil, but you can very clearly remember when you got better and he left your, your tail? Amen. Come on, come on, come on. And the angels ministered unto Jesus. I don't understand all that. 
I think we're going to get to heaven one day and we're going to see a lot of things we didn't realize. How that, uh, how in the world did I get better? <laughs> how did you help me through all that mess, Lord? And he's going to say, well, let's, let's look at it. And there it was, angels were ministering and helping us and leading us through. I don't know all about that. But I believe it. You hear me, yes or no? So now let's learn. Let's learn today what we can see quickly. Let's go, Raj. Pop it. Amen. Would you say this pretty loud this morning? Pretty loud. Come on. The Word was Jesus. One more time. Pretty loud. Come on. The Word was Jesus. That's how you fight Satan. Your TV preachers will say you some little trick on TV. But somehow they end up getting the money. That's the funny part. There is no tricks. Jesus doesn't play tricks. If you're going to fight Satan, this is the way you fight Satan. There is no other way to fight Satan. There is no other way. Maybe if I do this. That's what happens when you don't want to read the Scriptures. I was just dumb enough when I got saved at 16, 17 years old, I started memorizing Scripture. I was crazy. I'd write them on three-by-five cards and stick them in my pocket. I didn't know I was going to be a preacher. I was still a hellraiser. But I needed help. Say that with me. I needed help. See, God will help those that need help. It's those of us that think we're good. We fine. Peter, I'm good. We need help. I started memorizing Scripture. And before I knew it, I had me a big old stack of them. Then I'd put them in the glove box of my truck. I'd pull them out. I'm 19, 20, 21, 22, when I could have been in all kinds of hell. Amen, say. But God had his hand on me. There's something about hiding God's word in your heart, isn't there? Certainly wasn't perfect. I still messed up enough. But boy, having God's word hit in my heart. Guys, we need to do that. Are you hearing me? Yes or no? Well, I'm old. I can't remember nothing. Well, you better try hard, quick. You hear me or not? You better get on a stick. Oh, I'm good. I don't have the Scripture. Satan will leave me alone. He's going to beat the snot out of you. You need to fight him, man. You fight with the Word. Look at what Jesus said again. He answered said unto Satan, It's written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He said it again in verse 7. It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. He said it again in verse 10. Get behind me, Satan, for it's written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only shall you serve. And then you see the angels come, to, Satan leaves, and the angels come and minister. So the bottom line is, fighting the stress of Satan, you do it through his what? Word. It takes more than what? Can you say that pretty loud? It takes more than what? I'm a man of willpower. I am. It's got me in a lot of trouble in my life. But it's also, I like people with willpower. I like people who try hard. I am not at all a guy who likes whiners. I don't. I don't. What good is it? Whine, 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 whine. Got nothing done. I, would, I really prefer people that try. Amen. Say, I'm going to get my head up. I'm going to make it. I can do this. But I'm going to tell you something. You better have more than willpower when you're fighting Satan. Did you hear me? It takes more than willpower. Here's what it takes. Just say it pretty loud with me. Really loud. Say it loud. It takes... Now, y'all did better in the first service, but I want to try it one more time. It takes what? Word power. Woo! It takes word power. My mama was a drunk. She got saved when she was about 42 years old. She didn't know nothing about the Scriptures. She drank like crazy. Slept with other men. She, I've watched her before. There was a street preacher. She had cursed him out. My mama was no saint, far from it. She got saved. Only had 11th grade education. She started memorizing scripture. Sticking it on the coffee table, under the glass. You can't decorate these days like that, can you? What will people think if there's a scripture under your glass? Here's what they'll think. There's a scripture under her glass. <laughs> Mama would put them on the fridge. Wet an old chalkboard in the kitchen. 
And mom would write a little scripture sometime. Not every day, but she'd write a little scripture in chalk on a chalkboard in the kitchen where she's cooking and cleaning and washing clothes. See, mama was crazy. But mama started knowing the Bible. And you know what? She became an incredible light for the Lord. And she was a champion for God. Why do I say that? I'm saying, guys, excuse making ain't going to cut it. If my mama, who had no past with the scriptures, no life, if she could do it, if I, hell raised, doing the time of life when you're really screwing your life up, if I could do it, you can do it. Amen. Say, I want you to win, but Gary can't bless you. I bless you, be a winner. I bless you, be a winner. I, bless, I can't help you. If you don't get the word in you, you hear me? So this is what I'm really pounding today. The word must be my weapon. It must be my weapon. And, uh, Raj, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm only going to do the first three. Okay, buddy? And next week, I'm going to build this message a little more because of our communion today. But I want to show you what I do. And I learned this from the Lord. And this was not something I did my whole life. When I was hurting, when I was so stressed out, when I'm so stressed out, I don't know if I can make it anymore. If I'd have had a gun, I might have taken my own life. That's really sad. That's how low I got. So here's what I started doing. I started fighting back. Say fighting back. One more time. And this is how I did it. And I want to share it with you. Here it is. Here's some of the bullets that I fire. I have no mercy for Satan. None. He hates my guts. I hate his guts. He's mad because I'll never go to hell. He's mad because I've got a big, stinking mouth. And I can't stand him. And he has, he's hurt me. So I learned to fight back. And here's how I do it. I want you to learn it today with me. Number one, say that with me good and loud. One, two, three, say it. Say it again. One more time. He hates you saying that. I am loved. Get out of my house. Because that's what I felt. No one loves you. She doesn't love you. No one loves you. That's what we do. We start lying to ourselves. That ain't the truth. But he's a liar. He's a deceiver. Something bad will happen and we'll take it to the millionth degree some other direction because that's the way Satan works because he is a liar and a dog. So this is how I fight back. I am loved. But not just, ooh, I'm loved. I've got willpower. I'm loved. I'm loved. Oh, you better get something more than that. This is what I got. Who shall separate me from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword? You better have some scripture. And all these things, say it with me. I am more than a what? Conqueror through who? Him that what? Did you hear that, Satan? i got to calm down. I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, that's all demons right there. Nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Nor height, nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to do what? Separate me from the what? Love of God, which is in who? Where'd you learn that, Gary? Right there. Y'all got it or not? You're loved. If you say you're not loved, you're a child of God, you're just deceiving yourselves. You are loved. Why not get the ammo and fire back? Yes or no? Amen. Word power. So that's number one. Now, I got a long message, but we're just going to do three of them first service, I nearly killed those poor people because I did like eight. Number two, say that with me. I'm what? Again, I'm what? Now you're telling this to the devil. I, for, number one was what? I'm what? Number two, I'm what? You got no hold on me. All you got, Satan, because you ain't my daddy. All you got is blame. All you got on me, you can't burn my tail. I'm saved. All you can do is get me to somehow blame God. And that's a dead end road I don't want to go down. So I'm loved, but wait a minute, I'm saved. People wonder sometimes, you saved? What's that word? It's all through the Bible. 
What does it mean? Look at it. I have received Jesus. I have been given power to become a what? How do you get power to become God's son? Say it with me. Because I what? I believe in his name. Well, mama went to church. Grandma went to church. Satan will kick you straight in the face if you throw that at him. Oh, I, I'm good. I'm nice. We even do this. We think we're saved. I ain't never killed nobody. Dumbest people on the planet. You're saved because you believe in the name of the only begotten Son of the living God. And His name is who? Jesus. Amen. Come on. Come on. Boom. The Bible says, and the devils, what? Tremble. Say it. The devils, what? They tremble. We don't know how to fight. <laughs> Amen. Say. I want to win. Don't you say. I asked one of our coaches in our church. He coaches a six and eight, six-year-olds to eight-year-olds. <laughs> I saw him this morning out back. I said, let me ask you something. If you're going to be at Fellowship Church, i got a question to ask you. I said, I know you're coaching six to eight-year-olds. I said, but do you want, when you coach, get out there and beat those other kids' tails? He said, absolutely. I said, good, because otherwise I wouldn't even want you coaching. <laughs> we coach to win. You hear me or not say, I don't care if they're six or eight-year-olds. We're not just keeping score. We want to win. Amen. That's just the bad part of me. But I definitely want to beat the enemy. Amen. He hurts us. I'm saved. Here's another scripture. Say it with me. I am a child of God by faith in Christ Jesus. See, you might say, I can't mem mem memorize the scripture, Pastor. You can't memorize that. Get this message, go home, write them down, and hold on to them. How about this one? I'm joined unto the Lord in one what? What's that mean? He's got me, baby. You ain't got no hold on me. You ain't my daddy. He's my father. That's just plain English. I'm in Christ. I'm a what? New creature. Some of you talk about things. You're still held up by your past things you've done. Listen, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Satan will come at you. Listen, behold, all things are become what? New. All things are passed away. Everything's new, man. And all things are of God who has reconciled me to himself by Christ Jesus has given me now the ministry of reconciliation. Got no hold on me, devil. Y'all hear me now. Hope y'all right. Let's do the third one. We quit. We're going to have communion. How about that one right there? One, two, three, say it. Let me, let me ask you a question. Satan comes at you. He's messing with you. You're stressed out. And you start telling him, I'm loved. God loves me. Get behind me. You quote some scripture. Do you think that that just might help you, yes or no? Yes or no? You're going to do that or whine? And then on top of that, when you throw this one, I'm saved. When you come to Gary Clark's house and Kim's house, when you walk up on our porch, we got a big wide porch. On this side over here it says, as far as the east is from the west, painted with my own wife's hands on a board I found by the road. Beautiful. Probably worth $100. Then I got another big one on the left. It says, as far as the east is from the west. So when I walk in my home or visitors come to my home, you are forgiven, never to be remembered again. Amen. You think that's powerful? I'm saved. Amen. I'm forgiven, man. This is powerful. Talk to, talk to him like that. I got to quit. I give thanks unto the Father which has made me meet to be partakers of the inheritance and the saints of light. He's delivered me from the power of darkness. You ain't my daddy no more. Talk to him like that. I've been translated. He's translated me into the kingdom of his dear son. Did you hear me? 
in whom I have redemption through whose blood? Talk to him like that. I have the forgiveness of God. And that's why we're going to go do what we're doing. Jesus said, you do this in remembrance of me. And see if you don't have power in your life, power to fight. There is therefore now no condemnation to who? Why? Because I'm in who? And I walk not after the flesh anymore. Satan, I'm not going to fight fair anymore. I used to fight you in the flesh. No more. Now I fight you in the spirit. Did you hear me? That's pretty good stuff, isn't it? I don't know if you like it. I like it a lot. All right? I'm pretty cool with all this stuff this morning. Amen. Come on. Now here's our goal, church. Here's the goal. Why do I, I need to fight the stress of Satan? Now I could have talked all day about what those are in your life. How many would just say, Pastor Gary... When you say the stress of Satan, I know what you're saying because I've had it in my life. I've been there. Let me see some hands. Just, just so we know what we're talking about in this room. Amen? How many with another hand would just lift up and say, I'm like you. It almost killed me, Pastor. It almost killed me. It almost killed me. We know what we're talking, don't we? Yes or no? Almost killed me. But this is the goal. Now look at me now. Look at this. Then the devil leaves him. <laughs> and behold, angels come and minister to him. Now, I'm not a fool. I don't believe this is a one-time thing. I got it. I'm good. No, he's going to come after you. He's going to come back to you because he's going to think you, you forgetful. I really want you to double down, guys. Double down on how to do this. You hear me? Yes or no? Amen? It's not kooky. Not, is this kooky? Yes or no? Not kooky at all. Plain English to me. Thank you, Jesus. Tell him that this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Let's praise the Lord this morning. Come on for his word. Amen. <laughs> Boom. Simple. Hey, man, come on. How about the preacher from Washington? Did you get it today, yes or no? You got it? How about the one over here from New York? You get it? Makes sense? I know I'm odd. But if we got it, we got it. Y'all can't say nothing if we got it, right? I might be weird, but if we got it, we got it. Hey, man, come on, let's stand on up. Good job, good job, good job. Woo, I am wore out. Let's pray, guys. Now listen, try not to head out too fast because we want to have communion. And I understand if you've got to go to work, but, you know, if you can, stay with us. You might say, well, I don't go to this church. Are you loved? Are you saved? Are you forgiven? And I'd say, you're fine. How about that? You don't have to be a member of this church to have communion. We just don't do it like that. All I care about is, are you saved? If you die today, do you know you'd go to heaven? Any other answer than Jesus is a wrong answer. Can I lead you in a prayer this morning as Miss Karen plays? Listen, God loves you. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Pastor, how, how can I be saved? Well, the Bible's got all those answers. The Bible says if you'll confess with your mouth Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. The Bible says he's not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. I love this scripture. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Your pedigree, your bank account, none of that matters. What matters is your heart. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. That heart thing is your gut. God knows if you're playing games. So as we lead you in this prayer this morning, I ask you to deep down be honest and sincere from your gut. Be honest with Him. If you're trusting in the past, in your church, in your own good works, why not just say, hey, I'm wrong, God. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I had it wrong. I want to get it right. I want to get it right. I want to be saved today. Let's pray together. Would you pray with me, Lord Jesus? I know I'm a sinner. All have come short of your glory. And Lord, I have. I have. I ask for your forgiveness, Lord. And Jesus, I want you to know best I know how. And from my heart, from my gut, I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you're God's only son. I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose from the dead. And Jesus, I believe you love me. 
That's why I can pray like this, Lord. I believe you love me. You love me. The light's going on today. You love me. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord. I, I'm not going after any other way because you're the only way. I put my faith in you, Jesus. Save me today. Today, the first Sunday of March 2019. I don't want to be just thinking about it anymore. Maybe, maybe. I want to nail this today, Lord. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you, Jesus. Best I know how. I'm being as honest as I can, Lord. Save me today. In Jesus' name. Amen. With heads bowed, how many would say, Pastor Gary, I did understand. I did understand. And I, I prayed that prayer with you because I was clear as crystal in understanding. I, I put my faith in Christ today. Can I see your hand up and down? I did that today. I did that today. I did that. I did that. I did that. I did that today. God bless you. Some of you have raised that hand before. Here's the bottom line. I want you to get that so nailed down in your heart that you never doubt. You never doubt that again. You never doubt that again. That God loves you, that you're saved, and that you're forgiven. Help us, Lord, as we have our communion now to honor you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, would y'all follow me out? I'm going to sort of take the lead. Come on, we're going out in front of the crosses, which ain't far from your car. Hey, Sheriff, how you doing? Good to see you guys. Come on, let's go. Amen. God bless you.